One of the big struggles about living in an apartment is having a limited outdoor space, but that doesn't mean it needs to be boring. So in this video, I'm sharing my top 10 favorite ways that I have transformed my apartment patio space. It's getting warmer out, which also means it's getting closer to patio makeover season. Now, I moved into this apartment last year in May, and because I had other projects like this craft room that I wanted to prioritize, I never got to do a patio makeover. So while I'm working behind the scenes on that video, I thought I would recap some of my favorite renter-friendly DIYs and hacks that you can do in your own apartment patio or balcony space. So let's get in to my first idea. This is a never before seen DIY on the channel. And if you love sitting around a fire pit in the summertime, but obviously you rent, so that's not an option. Just pick up a flower pot that you like, some stones and also a mini tiki torch. I started by pouring a little bit of the stones into the bottom of the flower pot, just to fill it up to the height of my little tabletop torch. I placed the torch inside the bowl, then filled in the rest around it with some stones until it was full all the way to the top. Then for this step, you are going to need a funnel, which I did not have right here, to add in the tiki torch feel. And then all you have to do is enjoy your really cute tiki torch kind of faux fire pit feel that it creates. Probably one of my favorite render friendly patio DIYs that I've ever done on my enclosed balcony are these privacy curtains. I found the cheapest and easiest way to do it was by using some clothesline, some bolt snaps, and some eye hooks. So first up, you wanna measure and mark where you want the eye hook to go at the top and the bottom of the balcony opening, and then use a drill to make a pilot hole. After that, you'll wanna screw in the eye hooks into that pilot hole, and it does help to use some pliers to give you some extra strength and rotating those bolts. The reason I'm adding eye hooks to the bottom is that we'll be able to string a rope along the bottom as well. This will prevent the curtains from blowing around in the breeze, especially on a windy day. Now we're gonna tie a couple of different knots. The first is an anchor knot, and what you need to do is first insert your rope through the bottom of the bolt snap. Then you loop the rope around to the back of the bolt snap and pull it back through. Now take the end of the rope around the back of the left side of the rope, up through the loops wrapped around the bolt snap, and then pull it tight. Now to lock it all in place, wrap the end of the rope through the loop like you see here in the video, and that will lock it into place. And then to prevent your rope from fraying, use a lighter to melt the ends. You're then able to attach the bolt snap to the eye hook. Now on the other side, we need to make a more adjustable knot. It's called a midshipman's hitch. So to tie the knot, first insert the rope through the eye hook opposite the bolt snap. Next, cross the end over the top of the rope around the back and through the second loop. Now make a D shape with the rope end and take it under and around the loop of the D and pull it tight. So now you can see the cool part here is that when you pull on the rope on the right side with your right hand, you are able to guide the knot down with your left hand until it is nice and tight. And then finally, you can lock the knot into place using the same knots that you use to lock in the anchor knot. And then all you have to do is repeat that exact process to tie the top rope. Now with the ropes attached, it's time to add the curtains. I just used some basic sheer curtains and strung them on with the ropes, clipped the bolt snaps back into place, and they looked so perfect, provided a little extra privacy in my apartment complex, and also great for keeping out bugs when you want to enjoy an evening outdoors. If you love renter friendly DIYs, hacks, and room makeovers, then this is the channel for you. I'm Allie and I post a ton of renter friendly content just like this. And if you don't want to miss out on my upcoming patio makeover for this year, then you're going to want to make sure you're subscribed. One of the easiest and best renter hacks that I can think of for your balcony is adding light and a lot of ambient light truly does make the space that could be with string lights that could also be with faux candles 
or even lanterns. They truly do illuminate the space and just bring in that little extra cozy touch that's gonna make your patio so much more enjoyable in the summer. Along the lines of lighting, here is an easy DIY light fixture. I took two little solar lanterns that I had found and also some chain to attach them together. I then hooked the chain onto each of the lanterns and then added a nail to the top ceiling of my balcony and hooked the lanterns over top of that and had this really cute solar light. None of my apartments have ever had a standard balcony rail that a planter would fit over. So here's a really easy DIY to make one yourself. I'm going to be using some wire baskets that are used for kitchen storage and a wire over the door coat rack. And because I didn't like the white look of them, I spray painted them black, but you could paint them whatever color you want. After a couple of coats of that spray paint had dried, I brought them inside and added a little extra detail to the handle by wrapping some twine around each end. I just think this added a really nice organic touch that fit in with the decor touches that I was adding to my patio. Since this was a very cheap over the door coat rack, I just purchased it at the dollar store. I was able to bend the little hooks so that it would hold the baskets and then secure them in place using zip ties. I was able to flex the over the door portion of the coat rack so that it would fit over my balcony. And this held perfectly, didn't need anything else to secure it because the weight of the plants really did hold this into place. And it looks so cute and only cost a couple of dollars. And as an alternate idea, I have also used a utensil holder like this. I found this at Walmart a few years back, but you can find a similar long type basket and do the same thing using the same over the door hook and a couple of zip ties and it creates another really neat look. This is one of my favorite little Ikea hacks for your patio using the Gladham table. And what you're going to do is install the Gladham table legs together like so. And once you have them attached, you're gonna flip them over so that the bottom becomes the top and the top becomes the bottom. Next, you're going to need a 17 to 18 inch tray. I use this one here, but it has since been discontinued from Ikea. So I will link some similar options below. And for some extra security, this one had some crossbars on the bottom. I used some zip ties to secure the tray in place so that this won't blow away in the event of a summer storm. This is one of my most popular patio DIYs, and that is taking really cheap planters, find the cheapest ones in whatever sizes and shapes you want, and we're turning them into a faux stone or faux concrete look. So I'm using a combination of joint compound and latex paint in the kind of stone type concrete color that I'm going for. I then took a really large brush and just began applying that paint mixture on really generously, not even caring that there were some chunky bits and stuff because that's gonna be sanded down, but also really add to the realistic stone look that we're going for. After two coats of that paint had dried, I then went in with a smaller foam brush and started dabbing in some darker paint and then rubbing it in a little bit with a paper towel to just start to bring in a little bit more dimension. Then what really brings this to life is by taking a slightly lighter shade of gray than the colors that you've used before and lightly brushing it on as organically as possible. To, this will really bring in that stone look that we're going for. You kind of just brush it on. I loved the look of some brush strokes to create that natural look and then having some thicker patches as well.
And then the final thing that makes this come to life is using 100 grit sandpaper to sand these planters down. This will allow some of those other layers to shine through those top layers and create that smoothness and look that we're going for. And finally, to seal everything in, I gave the planters a coat of matte clear spray paint. Something I think every apartment patio must have is a rug. The wood on my patio was in pretty bad shape, so a rug covered that up to avoid any splinters. This is also just good because the rug will protect the patio as well. And I like to layer rugs for a really fun, cozy effect. I think it just looks really cool for an outdoor look. If you found any of these ideas useful so far, make sure you give this video a like and drop a comment about which hack has been your favorite so far. Now let's make a really simple hanging herb garden. If you have a blank wall on your apartment patio or even a door like I have right here, this is a perfect DIY to incorporate some patio gardening. I started with some one by twos. I believe they're four foot long and I just cut them down to my desired length. You can make this to whatever size you want. The best part is this project doesn't require any sort of power tool except for a drill, which is one of my most recommended tools that a renter should have. Next, I took some really small boards. I believe these were two by a quarter inch boards. Again, you can customize this to whatever you want. And these are going to be my vertical slats that my hanging planters will be attached to. And first I drilled some pilot holes to make it super easy to assemble this without having to worry about splitting the wood. And you can see that I'm just using some screws to drill everything into place and a little extra wood glue as well, just because this will be hanging outside and I want that extra security and rigidity. Next, I decided to take the easiest route to painting this, and that is with some black spray paint. And I just spray painted the entire thing black. You could stain this, which would look really nice. Or you could paint it whatever color you want to match your patio decor theme. Now, over the years, there's been different ways that I've attached the flower pots, but this one is my favorite, and it's using these little metal plant hooks and also some zip ties. You'll see me use zip ties a lot throughout this video because they are so versatile when you're doing outdoor projects. And because I used a quarter inch thick board, I wasn't able to secure these little plant hooks in with the screws that they came with. So the zip ties worked perfectly. And then because I'm hanging mine over a patio door, I just use some over the door hooks to secure everything into place. Then you just add your flower pots, whatever ones you wanna use that are the proper size for the rings that you've attached and then put in whatever plants you desire. This is such an easy way to make a small balcony herb garden. Now let's make some really fun patio art because if you have a balcony like I do, then you might have a blank wall that you want something to hang there. So what I did was thrift a really cheap wood canvas sign and sanded it down to get rid of the design. Now I'm gonna paint everything. I decided to go with kind of a whitewash because I liked that weather-worn look that the sign had after I sanded off the decals. I just figured I would work with it for the rest of my design. Next, I'm taking three mini crates. You can find these at the craft store. And I broke off two of the slats that were on the side, and now the side is going to become the new top of this planter. I then stained the wood pieces because they looked... I then stained the wood pieces, but you could also paint them. Next, using my Cricut, I created a custom pattern, and you can cut out whatever design you want with a pattern. You can hand paint a design. 
you could stencil a design, you could really do anything with this project for that background sign. But I kind of went with this really cool looking line drawing of different tropical leaves. After that decal was applied, I then assembled the different wood baskets together using some wood glue and some staples and then attached them to the bottom of the sign to create this really cool planter effect. Now this is totally up to you. You could actually use this as a real planter if you wanted, or you could even add in fake plants like I'm doing here using some faux succulents. I stuck in some floral foam, which in hindsight, I do wish I would have painted down to be a different color. And I stuck in the succul and I just stuck in the succulents in the arrangement that I thought would look the best, mixing in a variety of different heights, shapes, and sizes. I hope you learned something new or got some new ideas out of this video. If you want some renter friendly tips for inside, I recommend checking out this video right here. And that's everything I have for you today. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.